Okay, hey everybody, um, so I originally was going to do my October possible TBR in the video I just filmed for my September wrap-up, but the video was getting way too long, so I decided to do another video that is my October potential TBR. Like I said, I don't know if I'll read, get all these books done in October, um, I, grabbed, I don't think I grabbed one of the books that I wanted to read. Um, one second. Give me a minute. Okay, sorry about that. I totally did not. One of the books that I read this, and that I want to read this month, I forgot to grab. Um, okay, so first I will talk about the books I'm going to continue reading this month. Okay, so I'm going to continue reading It by Stephen King. Um, this is my favorite Stephen King. Um, this is my second time reading it. Um, unfortunately I probably will not get it done because it's so long. It's over a thousand pages. Um, I'm finally on the last chapter of the, the first section of the story, Cleaning Up, which is the chapter about Beverly, the, the character of Beverly, the one girl amongst the lucky seven, or the Losers Club, as they call themselves, too. Um, so I'm on that part, right, I'm gonna read that chapter next. And then I'm also continuing another Stephen King read. I'm trying to read all my Stephen, as much of Stephen King as I can. Um, I don't have a lot, so I did pick, I did put three books of his on my Christmas list. Um, I'm also continuing The Dark Half, which I'm almost finished with, um, which is basically about this author who creates this alter ego, um, George Stark, who is this crazy psycho guy, and... He decides and now that it's finally time to retire him, but George Stark comes back from the grave and becomes real and is all like, no, you're not retiring me. I'm not dead yet. And he starts killing people. Um, so this is obviously Stephen King, one of his thrillers. I'm not a huge thriller fan, but I've read a few thrillers that I thought were kind of interesting. I think this is okay. Um, not my favorite of his, like... It is still my favorite of his. Um, so I'm probably going to read more of it before I go to work today at 3.30. Let's see. Okay, I'm going to put those to the side for now because I'm not going to read those. Um, I'm also going to continue reading East of Eden, these two books, East of Eden and The Secret History. Um... I remember seeing these at the library. This one I remember wanting to get get um for have my own like personal copy because it's a because it's so long. I didn't want to borrow it from the library, but then my mom, you know, even though my mom suggested, but then I was like, you know, I may as well check and see if it's there. So it was, and I decided to go ahead and get it along with this one, um, the secret history. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not very far in them, but it's okay. I mean, I don't think I have to worry about someone wanting to rent these books before I get them done. Okay. So, um, like I said, it's obviously Halloween, so I'm trying to read some spooky reads. Um, one of them is The Vanishing Game, which I got this years ago from, I read in the back. This woman's brother, twin brother, disappeared, and it's basically her trying to figure out what happened to him. It's 
especially when she receives a message from him saying him saying he's not dead. So I imagine this is probably a thriller. Um, I'm also going to read Frankenstein, a classic. I already started it, not not recently, but earlier either this year or last year or before then. I might just start from the beginning, but, um, so I'm not, so I'm going to continue that one. I also am going to read, I read this years ago and really loved it, so I'm going to read it again. That's The Night Circus. I already put a bookmark in it, um, I remember, um, figure this is a good October read. It kind of has a whimsical, the more whimsical side of October and Halloween. Um, so I'm going to read this. I remember really enjoying it. Reading the, loving the writing style. Um, I remember enjoying the romance. So I'm going to continue with this one. I wonder if my friend would like this one. I mean, there is no... I'll have to suggest it to her, my best, my best friend. I wonder if she'll like it. Either one of them might like it. Um. Oh, oh I forgot. I'm also going to be continuing Queen of Shadows. Um, this has taken me a while to read because I am a Kale fan, and I heard that he goes totally on a character in this book. And a lot of people that don't like Kale, a lot of people, this created a lot of hate for Kale, and a lot of people that don't like him were... Or didn't even like him before, hating him even more now. And right away in the first couple of chapters, Kale and Aelin, she goes by Aelin now, are at each other's throats and blame the other one for what has happened in Ardland. Ardland, um, or whatever the place is called, I can't remember. Um, so I'm also going to continue reading this. But it still might take me a while to read it. But I do love her writing style. I love all her characters. It's just Kale obviously one of my favorites. As you can see, I'm on chapter chapter twelve. So I'm gonna continue this one. This is the fourth book. Um Okay, so now I'm also gonna read this is about, you know, more a witch family. It's um, it's a Nora Roberts book. It's about witches. Um, it's the first book in a trilogy. I have a second book. I don't have the third one yet. Um, it's basically about witches, and I'm guessing it's a lot closer to the true Wiccan mythology and stuff in Wiccan religion. Um, I kind of like how it has these French flaps, which is really cool. I like books that look old. Like this one, the way the pages are made, it looks old. Um, that's one of the things I like about the author Kate more than her books look old. Um, it looks like it takes place in Ireland. So I'm gonna read this one. It's obviously for obvious reasons. It's about witches. Um, let's see what else. Okay, so here are some, I'm going to read about some, like, hauntings at Williamsburg, Yorktown, and Jamestown. Um, my sister lives in Virginia, and she went to school in Virginia, so I picked this up one time when we were visiting her at college. Um, but I never got around to reading this, and that was years ago. She's no longer in college. She graduated in, like, 2008 from college. Um, and then I remember we went to... I think this was in California. We were in San Diego, and we went to this famous hotel called the Ho the Hotel Del Carnado. And there is apparently a ghost that roams that hotel. So um, we bought this book. I never got around to reading it, so I'm going to read it now this month. So I like I love ghost stories. I'm a huge fan of ghost stories. I prefer ghost stories over, like, vampires and werewolves, um, or Frankenstein, but I'm gonna read Frankenstein still. Okay, this is not a scary book. This is one of the books that my elderly friend who likes to read, um, he gave me a whole bunch. He gave me, my, mo my mom and I, a whole bunch of books, and this is one of the books he gave us. Um, I'm gonna read it. 
and what I probably will do after I finish it is either give see if my mom is interested in it or um I might donate it to the used bookstore. Um Um, so it's basically one of those, I think, by the sound of it, it's probably one of those coming of age stories in Boston, obviously. Um, so I'm going to read it. It's not a scary book, not a spooky book, but it has, the cover is very fall autumn-esque. So. Okay. Let's, there's, I have three more books here. This one, it's not, I didn't put it on the list. I, I mean, I might have put it on the list and took it off, but I talked about it last night on one of the video I made. Um, there's a name written in here, Daryl Worley, and I do not know why. I, I don't know if it's my, I'm guessing that's my handwriting. I don't know why I wrote that name. Um, Maybe it was someone I met in school or something. Um, oh, I remember I was doing the top five Wednesday, top five witch books, books about witch witches. For some reason, my Mac was all like, no, that's not the correct spelling. It's supposed to be witch as in W-H-I-C-H, like witch as in which thing do you want? So apparently my, my word talking, my word, Microsoft Word on my Mac does not recognize the term witch as in a witch, as in a person that's a witch. Which is really annoying. It's kind of annoying. Um, but I might read this one. I took it off the list when I, because I type out, I like making lists on my computer, so I typed it out on there. And I think I might have taken this one off, but I might read it again. I might put it back on there because it is about witches. Um, and I read it once and I want to read it again soon. Um, that's the other thing. I, let's see. Witches are the other creepy Halloween-esque being that I like. Witches and ghosts. Um... And I kind of like demons, too. Like, reading about demons. Um, this is another Stephen King, but it's his short stories collection. Um, November, in November I am doing a novella month where I read novellas um, throughout the month of November. Um, and this, I might read this one, too, then, but I decide I'm going to read it now because it's you know, Stephen King, and it's mostly horror, um, and creepiness, so I'm gonna, I already read one of his, those stories in here, and that was The Longlers, um, and I have seen the movie version of Secret Window, Secret Door, um, so I'm gonna read, like, two of the stories in here. Um, and then this, again, another non-creepy read, but I started this a while back, so I decided to continue with it, and that's A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, which I did not realize was a classic when I saw it. I did not, like, this was another book that our elderly neighbor gave, gave me. Um, I did not realize that this was a cl considered a classic, but apparently it is. Um... So I'm going to, maybe, I guess it's a mod, considered a modern classic, but just the way it's written, it feels more, more modern. But there are some classes that I'm told that kind of read like modern novels. Not just the modern classics, but like, well, I guess probably more so the modern classics are probably like that. So I'm going to continue this one. Like I said, it's not a scary read, but I do want to read it. So those are my October possible reads. Like I said, I don't know if I'll continue them, but I'm going to read some more of the dark half, hopefully, um, before we have old our old neighbors back from where we used to live are coming to visit today, I believe. Um, my Like my dad just said that they will be here soon, but I do want to read some of the dark half before they get here, because as soon as they come, I'm going to be, you know, distracted a little bit. 
<laughs> want to say hi to them and everything. So but I'm going to read some more of the dark half before I go to work at 3.30. So, I'm um, sorry again, but I did say if you watch my September wrap-up, I'm probably going to mention that I'm doing, I'm going to talk about my October possible TBR, but like I said, the video was getting way too long. And this one is a lot shorter, obviously, because um, I didn't spend as much time talking about the books or talking about other things. So... I'm sorry about that, and then I said I was going to talk about my T October possible team yard in that video, but I didn't, so I hope you will, I will refer to in the, I will probably leave a little message in the, the drop box or whatever it's called and let you know to go to this video if you are interested in what I'm going to read this month. Um, in that video, I will mention that. Alright, um... So, whenever you, why don't, um, if you guys want to, you can share in the comments what you're reading this month. If you're going to read anything that's spooky or creepy this, um, this month for Halloween. Unless, of course, you are not from the U.S. I don't know if you guys, if, if, um, if you guys don't celebrate Halloween, then just talk about what you're reading this month. And like I said, if you do, then tell me what spooky, scary reads you're planning on reading this month. Alright. Bye!